Welcome to South Park City Museum, a 19th century mining boom town in 21st century Colorado. Hello, my name is Erin Pulsifer and I am the curator at South Park City Museum. In today's video, we will find out what it was like at an Old West general store. Before we get started, please just take a moment to subscribe to our channel. It helps us out by telling YouTube that our channel is worthwhile. If you like our videos and would like to be notified when we post new ones, hit that notification bell so you'll never miss a thing. And now, let's get started. The 1859 Colorado Gold Rush brought more than just miners. As droves of prospectors spilled into South Park, dreaming of hitting the mother load, other entrepreneurs weren't far behind them. There were riches to be found in the retail trade as well. The general store was a boom town staple, a vital part of the community, bringing access to much needed supplies, a place to pick up the mail, and even serving as a social hub for townsfolk. Without a general store, miners and other residents of towns like Fairplay had to get by on what they could source locally or what they could make. A general store brought access to luxury items like sugar and lamp oil, and it brought a sense of normality and comfort to an otherwise hard scrabble life. Having such necessities helped those early towns grow into thriving communities. The general store was a successor of sorts of the early trading posts of the American frontier. They prospered by using the simple formula of supply and demand. Residents of boom towns didn't have time to make the long journey to the nearest city for supplies. They were willing to pay higher prices in exchange for the convenience and the extra time they needed to keep working their claims. A miner's trip to the general store not only fulfilled their need for supplies, but it served as much needed social time as well. It was a place to catch up with friends and hear all the news and gossip the proprietor had to offer. Chairs next to the wood stove offered a comfortable spot to sit and chew the fat. The general store often served as a post office as well. The shopkeeper would sort and distribute mail as it was delivered via stagecoach and later by rail. The fleeting nature of boom towns, thriving while the mines were productive and gone when those same mines played out, led business owners to be cautious as to how much they invested in their storefronts. Many general stores were run out of a simple canvas tent, only to expand to more permanent structures once the town became more established. It was common for general stores to be made up of a simple, wooden, two-story structure faced with what was called a false front. An architectural trick, false fronts were designed to make the building it was attached to look more impressive than it actually was. Some boom towns like Fairplay became established towns and businesses were open in more permanent structures made of wood. After the Fairplay Fire of 1873, stone and brick structures were more desirable as they were less flammable than their wooden predecessors. The Simpkins General Store at South Park City is a two-story building which was moved log by log and reconstructed from the remains of a false-fronted building from Dudley, a ghost town north of Alma sometime between 1957 and 1959. It is the only building that was not moved intact to South Park City. The date of the original construction is unknown. Almost everything was sold at the general store. The items ranged from buttons to shoes, from sacks of flour to guns. Packed from floor to ceiling, general stores of the Old West had to be organized for the proprietor to find what their customers needed. The way the Simpkins General Store is laid out, with food items on one side and dry goods on the other, was a common way to organize merchandise in the Old West. Customers wouldn't browse the aisles like we do today. They would instead give their order to the person working behind the counter, and then, once all of their purchases were counted, weighed, and wrapped up, they would pay and be on their way. The way we shop today, on our own with shopping carts, didn't come about until the 1930s with the rise of the supermarket. At the Simpkins General Store, Cracker Barrels accompany a cheese table set with an authentic round of goat cheese from the 1880s enclosed in a glass case. The cheese was a unique gift to the museum donated by friends of museum founder Leon Snyder. There are old-time favorites such as whorehound syrup, 
and towels log cabin maple syrup packaged in a tin can representing a pioneer log cabin. Preserved raspberries in small crocks, spices of tartar, cloves, ginger, and pepper line the many shelves. Butter molds, china crocks, rolling pins, and cooking utensils are stacked high. A wooden cabinet stores corn, beans, sunflower seeds, rice, and peas. Shoes, spats, umbrellas, and parasols are on display for the fashion-conscious customer. A healthy selection of hat pins, buttons, and even eyeglasses are available alongside lanterns, rat traps, and even padlocks. The general store was often the first place in town to have a telephone and was another service provided to townsfolk. At the rear of the store are post office boxes from the town of Garrow, one of the earliest post offices in the South Park area. The general store was often a family-run business. Each member of the family had a role at the store. It took up most of the family's daily life. The store would usually be open from sunup to sundown six days a week. This meant that every family member had roles to play to keep the business going. Even the children had jobs like keeping the store clean, helping to load and unload shipments and deliveries, even helping to grind coffee and fill orders. One day, if they were lucky, those children might inherit the family business, so they learned the essentials of running the store from a young age. Since most Old West towns were based around mining, and in the case of Fair Play, high-altitude farming and ranching, people didn't usually earn regular wages. It was common for storekeepers to advance credit to customers whose yearly income was tied to the harvest or to a productive mine. When the customers were paid for their crops, cattle, or ore, they would be expected to pay off their bill at the general store. Bartering was also common. Storekeepers would trade fresh produce or eggs for staple items such as sugar or even lumber. Sometimes, in the case of a large harvest for example, store credit would be issued instead of trade, which would often see the farmer through the rough winter months. Come harvest time, the cycle would start all over. It kept the local economy moving along and it helped communities establish themselves for the long haul. The general store thrived in the Old West. It was an important part of the community for decades. It wasn't until the advent of the mail order catalog and the expansion of the railroad, when customers could get what they want delivered to them, that the general store gave way to specialty stores. By the late 1920s, the general store became less of a small town staple and more of an old fashioned novelty until it was gone. If you would like to see the Simkins General Store in person, South Park City Museum is open from May 15th to October 15th every year. As a nonprofit organization, South Park City survives on the proceeds from ticket sales and private donations. If you'd like to contribute, the link to our donation page is below. Donations from this video will be put to work maintaining our historic buildings and will help conserve over 60,000 artifacts. What do you think of the way general stores operated in the Old West? Do you think you would like to shop that way? What other topics would you like to see covered on this channel? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, please support South Park City by giving us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.